A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, well, not a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago in a land sort of far away, it is a period of unrest for the people of God. The empire of King Herod, backed by the Roman oppressors, is a dark force of the land of Judah. Who can bring light into this dark situation? Who can bring light into the even deeper darkness of our own sin? Men from the East believed they had found the answer. These men, who some called wise, some called magi, some say they were kings, they spot a new light in the night sky. They follow this star, believing that it would lead them to another light, a light for all men and women, the light of the world, the one sent by God. It's the light spoken of in the book of John.
Star Trek begins with hope. The Magi followed the star with the belief, with the hope, that it would lead them to a new king. But this journey began many years before that. For centuries, the faithful had put their trust in God to send a savior to deliver them from enemies, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Romans. God was preparing something greater. He was sending his own son into the world, the only one who could deliver the people from the curse and the sin. God spoke through the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Joel. These prophets told the people, have hope, God has not forgotten us. The Messiah, the Savior, the Christ is coming. One of those messages delivered by the prophet Micah would have a crucial role to play in the journey of the Magi hundreds of years later. But you, Bethlehem, though you are small and, and among the clans of Jew, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler of Israel, whose origins are from the old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name, the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his righteousness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. <coughs> You're right, I'm in. 
Me too, or to me. Great. I'm hungry. Let me some of McDonald's first.
When we now return to the adventures of Luke Skywatcher, Only One Kenobi, and Yoma. When we last saw our three wise men, they had been traveling for some time, following a new star that God had placed in the sky. And eventually they came to Judah and to the capital city of Jerusalem. The, the temple of God was in Jerusalem. The, the king's palace was in Jerusalem. Surely, surely this would be the perfect place to find the newborn king that God that God had promised. The current king of the land was a man named Herod. Herod was feared by the people, disliked, both, disliked by his own family, and... Watch it! Sorry, he wasn't a nice guy. So, uh, what's on the agenda for today? <laughs> right, right. In the... In the... Two, you're having your own parents arrested. Well, let's move that to 11.30 so they can take part in that torture. Yes, sir. Oh, and you have some visitors. Why is one from the east? What do they want? I don't know. Send them in. Hello, and welcome to my kingdom. Uh, thank you. To what do I owe this visit? Come to see the king of the Jews. Well, here I am. Take a good long look. Come to see you, we did not. Pardon? What was that? What he's trying to say is that we didn't come to see you. We came to see the newborn king. New king? We saw a star in the sky. We thought he might be here in this royal palace. But here he is not, I fear. What? Excuse me for a moment. Advisor. They say a new king has been born. But I am king. I cannot let anyone take my throne from me. We must find this child and kill him. Yes, sir. Where was this baby born? According to the prophet Micah, the new king of Savior will be born in Bethlehem. Excellent. Uh, you must go to the town of Bethlehem. This is where the new king has been born. This is so exciting. Our long journey is finally almost over. Find him, we must worship him, we will. Speak English. I mean, once you find him, uh, come back here and tell me where he is. So you can worship him too? Yes, that's exactly I I want to take care of that precious little baby. Creepy you are. <laughs> You've already changed so much during this journey, but I feel like this new king will change everything. <laughs> yes, this king came to change the world. I know. Thanks for the directions. We'll be going now. I do not like that guy. I'm not looking forward to meeting up with him. Go find home a different way we should. <laughs> yeah. In the absence of light, the darkness thrives. We see that the darkness in the heart of King Herod. If we're not afraid to look too closely, we will see that same darkness in our own hearts. The purpose of the light is to drive away the darkness, to overcome it. Herod knew that he didn't want this to happen. His place, his position, and his soul were all threatened by the promised light of the Savior. Herod had two options, allow himself to be changed by the light, or try to extinguish it. He didn't make, not make the right choice. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah, during the time of King Herod, Maggie from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is this one? who has been the born king of Jews. We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jews with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem of <coughs> Judah. They replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, all are by no means least among the lords of Judah. For out for of you will come a ruler who will support my people as well. Then Herod called the men, the Magi secretly and found out from <coughs> him the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, 
Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so, so that I too may go and worship him.
coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed, and they were over, no, bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having to, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. They return to their country by another route. Jesus' birth in the tiny town of Bethlehem was the beginning of a much bigger story. It's the story of a preacher who traveled the countryside healing the sick, performing miracles, and revealing mysteries of the kingdom of God. It's the story of how the man without sin is the story of a son whose earth whose earth was perfectly life reflected his father in heaven. It's the story of how God himself hung on a cross and suffered the death that we deserved. It's the story of how we, he rose from the grave considering death. It's the story of how we can experience forgiveness, the peace through him. This journey is the faith in Jesus. God has put the star in the sky for us, a marker, a promise, a guide. He just have to decide to make that star towards you. May the Lord be with you. All right. Let's give them a hand. Well, that's a great story. Really appreciate that. Um, uh, let, we're going to have them say their names here in just a moment as they leave, and we're going to sing one last song. But if you can help stack chairs right after this service, that'd be a help. If you can't, that's fine, too. We will have prayer counselors right down here, down the front with yellow lanyards around their neck. If you'd like to come and talk to them and pray with them about anything, feel free to do so. And if this is your first time with us, we would like to meet you and greet you, and have, we have a gift for you back at that door, so if you Come right back to that door right after the service. We will have a gift for you. Let me also uh, remind you the ornaments out in the front foyer from Glenda's class, the, the grade school class, and that would be a wonderful uh, thing to support. And next week we will have regular service times, 8.30 for service, the ornaments and fellowship, then Sunday school and 10.45 worship. So next week we'll be back to normal. And then also Christmas Eve, we are changing a little bit. It's still going to be at 6 o'clock, but it's going to be here in the Family Life Center, and we're going to serve refreshments starting at 5.15. So for Christmas Eve, you come anytime between 5.15 and 6, and I think you'll really enjoy that service. Okay, uh, young people, I would like you to just come off one by one, and I'd like you to say your name in the microphone, first and last name, so we can hear you. Kenzie Johnston. Mackenzie Johnston was not in the programs. Sophia Bonrostro. Gaston. Isaac Ballam. Lee Quigman. Lawson Cowan. Valerie Sheehorn. Reagan Cowan. Cole Halsey. Rowan Oxball. Chloe Stone. Ethan Payne, Aiden Schneider, Daniel Sieber, Michael Stauffer. All right, thank you. Thank you. thank you very much. We're going to sing one more song. Let me read the scripture when you stand. We'll sing right after the scripture from Luke 2 by Simeon after seeing the Christ child. said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory for your people, Israel. 